On today's episode, we talk about the Netflix shows that are not originals. We test our improv chops with more fake sponsorships. I break down the next-gen gaming consoles. And our first-week food burger edition review of Nano Brew, all coming up on the Segway Podcast. Hey, welcome to the Segway. The best thing to happen to you on a Thursday. That's right. We're recording live in Cleveland. That's right. <laughs> in Cleveland's, uh, in, in LeBron's old office space. Well, that's sad. It is sad. <laughs> it's sad when you say it like that. Speaking of sad, and that almost sounds like it's a funny transition, but it's not. This is our first podcast that we're recording since the passing of Kobe Bryant. So it's a tragedy. Have to mention it. Send condolences to everybody that knew him, everybody whose you know, lives he touched just by being a, a great person and a great player. His family. And his daughter. Yeah, his daughter. But I think he has multiple, right? Doesn't he have three? Yeah, but the, oh, only, you mean one, the only one that died in the accident. I feel worse about that than Kobe. Yeah, that's true. I So it, it it's it's interesting because Kobe's somebody I always rooted heavily against. Like I didn't – like I always picked Michael Jordan against him in that comparison. And obviously I always picked LeBron against him. And I actually kind of empathized. There's this Fox Sports analyst called Nick Wright who kind of came out the day it happened or the day after and was like, um, you know, I spent so much of my career critiquing him and pitting other players higher against him that I feel like I was robbed of just appreciating the greatness that he was. And I kind of empathize with that a little bit. One of my most angry moments was playing uh, NBA like uh, Live 2008 and just whipping this toy penguin <laughs> at my TV, knocking everything over. Because this guy literally only used Kobe Bryant in the entire game, and I was winning by two. And with point whatever seconds left, he just passed it into Kobe, shot up a three, and beat me online. Kobe. I was I was 16. So <laughs> I got pulled over. By the fuzz? By the cops. By the coppers. Yeah. So I got pulled over. Um, in Brooksville, but I, he was very kind. He let me go without anything. What'd you do? I was driving and it was dark. I didn't realize it was dark. Like I just pulled out of no headlights, gro- no headlights. Ah. I just pulled out of the grocery store and he pulled me over. I was like, Oh, that's silly. I forgot to turn my, why is he pulling me over? He was like, why are you driving without your headlights? And I was like, I just forgot. He was like, what are you doing? I'm like, going to get dinner. And he let me go. Did he was, call you son? I feel like that's what cops do. He they- did not call me son, but he wasn't mean. So whatever. That's cool. Dude, I got pulled over by a cop in North Canton over the summer, and he was really cool. Yeah. There's some good cops out there, man. Yeah, there's some nice ones. A lot of shitty ones, but really good cops out there as well. All right, so you're on Netflix, and you don't want to watch, like, an original Netflix because they have, like, an energy about them, but you want to put on something. I like how that's, like, your... How about you don't know if it's going to be good or not? I guess that's And that's not a knock against Netflix, because they do have some really good shows. Oh, yeah, some of them. But, like, so we're going to do a check these out on things that are not Netflix originals, but are on Netflix. Correct. TV shows, specifically. Yes, not movies. Yep. TV shows, not Netflix originals, but you can stream them as of, oh, God, February... The first week of February. I don't do... Hold on. I'll I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. What are you talking about? Because it is time-based. They pull stuff. Oh. So as of February 6th, 2020, these are shows you can stream on Netflix. That's true. Okay, so our ver- our first Check These Out, which premiered uh, in 2011 on FX, is American Horror Story. Have you ever watched American Horror Story? Uh, yeah, actually, I I saw up to season three. Yeah, okay. Up like so you saw season 3. Yes. We were living together. Yeah. So what it is, um for those of you that need to check it out and don't know what it is, it's a horror anthology series where each season is technically its own like uh story arc, right? Its own story arc, correct? Some of them without giving away spoilers obviously. Some of them do intersect eventually. But what they do is they take uh 80% of the same characters or actors, sorry. They take 80% of the same actors from season to season. Some new, some come in in later seasons and they stick around and some leave. Like Jessica Lange, for instance, she kills it like the first like four or five seasons. I think she leaves in season five. But she makes an appearance. And then Kathy Bates comes in season three. Isn't and she Gaga in season five? Yeah, I didn't. Uh, season five was one of my least favorite. But th- that's the cool thing where it's like um, if a season comes in and it's a topic you don't care about, you can kind of be like, eh, I'll catch it next time. Like season four was called Freak Show. It had Neil Patrick Harris. So people were like, oh, my God, I, it wasn't my favorite. Um, if you ask me my favorite 
I um, also want to shout out Sarah Paulson and Evan Peters. That's kind of a non sequitur. But those two, and Emma Roberts, they kill it. They're great. Oh, yeah. But season two, I love Asylum. I was going to say, season two is nuts. That's probably, in my opinion, the scariest. Yes, Asylum, I think it's the scariest. Asylum's the scariest. Coven is not scary. The third one is about witches. I think it's really interesting, though. That's my favorite, just in terms of story. Yeah. And then I really, really like season six, Roanoke. My Roanoke Nightmare. Great oh, is that twist. what it's about? Great. Oh, dude. I it, didn't know that. Well, it's not like the Roanoke, like necessarily like the Settlers thing. It's not? It kind of, it plays on it a little bit, but it's okay. not probably what you'd expect. All right. Um, The one they just came out with, I believe, was like a throwback to 80s slasher. I think it's called H- AHS for American Horror Story 84. Okay. It's not bad, but um, I, w- I would check it out. And if you're not digging the season, move on to the next one. Season one's really good too. Yeah. Just to I, start. Yeah, that, absolutely. Season one, Haunt the Murder Mystery House, whatever, Murder House, whatever it murder is. Murder House, I think. Murder House, it's a great start. Are, but any of them are great just dive right in so my first episode fuck me. so two right <laughs> so two yeah this is number two <clears throat> i didn't know that this had the show had a stigma of being like an old man show Re- until oh. it was pointed out to me i actually don't even think i ever told you about this show it's called longmire never heard of it it was like a usa teen i don't know it's so fucking stupid but i love it so much it's about a detective from wyoming not detective He's a sheriff from Wyoming, um, and it's there's a lot more murders in Wyoming than you'd ever expect. Where do you rank Wyoming? Wyoming? Yeah. Uh, fucking top, top ten. <laughs> <laughs> You're so bizarre. <laughs> oh, well, from the show, I really like it. You know, I think they filmed it in New Mexico, but Longmire it got to like season five on cable, and so it's kind of like a cheat because Netflix did buy it. Uh, well, that's, so okay. that's okay. It didn't premiere. No, it did didn't. Not. Okay. So our third check these out is a newer show. It uh, debuted or premiered, as they say, on NBC in 2018. It's called Good Girls. Have you heard about that? Uh, no. It's okay. So it's these three middle-aged women. Well, two of them are middle-aged. One of them's younger-ish. And they kind of, I don't want to spoil, it's not spoil, but they, they get like, it's like these normal suburban Michigan moms that get wrapped up in like drug dealing. So essentially they have to rob a store, they get involved with this drug dealer and they start like, um, what's it called? Washing money, washing cash. Laundry? Laund- yeah, sorry. Washing laundry. That's what I'm <laughs> think of. Coins, you know. So they end up laundering money and doing stuff like that. But it's, so it's like. It's a balance of that. It's really funny. There's a girl. I don't. It, it didn't make my list because it got taken off of Netflix. But there's a show called Parenthood with like Dak Shepard that I really liked, and Lorelai. I, I say Lorelai as the actress, Lauren Graham. Her ca- actor, her character's daughter is in this show, and that's one of the reasons why I started watching it. So, I was speaking. Matthew Lillard is in this, and that I sorry. That's that's just a. Uh, <laughs> Another cool. non-secondary, no, Matthew <laughs> Lillard from Scooby Doo and Thirteen Ghosts is in oh, this as okay. well. So that that's good girls. Number four. I actually mentioned this to you today. Oh. Sherlock. Okay. BBC, though. B- 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 C. BBC. Uh, with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes. Doctor Strange. Doctor Strange and Martin Freeman, who is also in the Avengers series. Yes. Yes. And he's, fr- he's uh, Bilbo. 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 You know, Benedict Cumberbatch is small. Smaug. He is small. Smaug. Um, but anyway. The desolation. <laughs> yes. But Sherlock is about um a detective. Who's an asshole? Huh. In England, it's actually it's very good, but they have a weird runtime. It's like an hour and twenty five minutes each episode. Does it remind you of Sherlock Holmes? It's kind of like yes. that, isn't it? It's it is Sherlock Holmes. Yes, I know. Just kidding. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it is Sherlock. But Holmes. But see, like that's obvious. Where there's that show Elementary, where you know, you think it's too obvious? No, I'm just pointing that out. That people oh. would get it. That Sherlock is obviously no like there's Sherlock literally means one thing. Yeah, right. There's Sherlock. nothing it could be. Yeah, like you can't use that word or that name and anything else and it not be tied to it. Yeah. Where that show Elementary, I feel like you would could start watching and not realize that it's like a spin off of Sherlock Holmes. I think you could too, but I don't know. Sherlock is really good. So our fifth check these out is Scream, which not the movies, not the movies, but it does have it has Ghostface in it. So that premiered on MTV in 2015. I believe there's three seasons, two or three seasons of it. This definitely probably isn't going to be the best of these recommendations that you would watch, but I'm like a sucker for that like teenage 
there's a killer mystery type thing. It gives you that vibe. Like people like the Stranger Things. They like the Riverdales with like the 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 black mask and you know stuff like that. Like the whole Riverdale, Thirteen Reasons Why, Scream. I really eat up the teenage drama. Throw in Scream like a classic horror villain, and you got me sold. And there's some really good acting in it as well. And uh, trying, they give you it's the, kind of like the Who Done It of like who is the ghost face, who is the killer. And they also do a really good job of making you feel like any character is expendable. Because there were a couple of moments where I was like, wow, I like this guy and they're really going to kill him. So that that kind of, that took me by surprise. And I give it credit for that. So Number six is, I don't know, a network it premiered on. I want to say NBC, but I'm not sure if that's right. That's something I should have looked up. Uh, but it's got Kristen... You know the name of it? Dunce. <laughs> what? Not Kristen Dunce. What's your fucking name? Uh, it plays. She plays Anna in Kirsten Frozen. Bell. Kristen Bell. Yes. Is it Kirsten or Kristen? Kristen Bell, right? Kristen Bell. Kristen. Okay. Yeah. But it's, it's the... Kirsten Dunst, is what. Yes. Okay. <laughs> the show is uh, the Good Place. Oh, I fucking hate that. You show. You hate the Good Place? Oh, I hate that show. I really enjoy the Good Place. A lot of people do. I'm the minority for sure. I think it's fun. It's about a woman who dies and then. Hilarity ensues. I think it's a good show. Tyler's an asshole. Don't listen to him. See, there's two things I hate about that. I hate that that pitch too, because that like the hila- and then hilarity ensues. <laughs> hilarity ensues. That's like that's like a say. trigger thing for me. Oh yeah, you triggering a blow up the house. I'm shook. Uh. <laughs> no, I do hate that phrase because I feel like it's like when you I don't know, but that's not a knock against the show. Yeah, that's no, me. That's a knock against you, motherfucker. <laughs> Anything? So go ahead. Continue. So she dies and then. It's really about her trying to find out about herself. Are you pooping? No, I'm just <laughs> trying to think of the best way to say that. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with that. Yeah, it's 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 funny. It's a funny show. Would one say that hilarity ensues? <laughs> I mean, they might say that. Yeah. All right, to piggyback on that. Fuck you. <laughs> Number seven. If you guys haven't seen this yet, shame on you. Shame on you. 2010 AMC. Do I have to say anything else? I already know what it is. 2010 AMC. I'm talking about The Walking Dead. I'm better for Lord. <laughs> I'm better for Lord. You got a weak boy. <laughs> um, so one uh, big part of this is nostalgia. When I first started watching this, it was my very first semester at college. Me and my best friend were roommates. We literally like sat down, got a blanket, got ice cream, and we're like, we're going to watch this zombie Did show. you guys kiss too? <laughs> uh so what we did was is we 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 always pick characters that's something we did in high school we'd watch like a terrible horror show or you know ba- b-rated horror movie and we would pick characters at the beginning like i want to be that guy and i'm gonna be that guy and you kind of root for him you know just like just to live you know what i mean like even if you don't really identify with them you just root for him so <laughs> as soon as it starts you see rick and my my buddy tyler's like hey i'm rick and then you see Shane. I was like, that's fine, dude. I'm Shane. And I didn't read the fucking comics. I'm like, <laughs> look at these dudes. They're best friends. This is great. So I, I literally have been a Shane apologist now for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> I won't go into further detail. I mean, you all should know. If, and I, if There's literally anybody on here that is like, what's The Walking Dead? So I'm ho- hopefully I'm the push that gets you to just go see it. But it, I mean, it's great up until like season probably like four or five. There and there's many more seats. I think they're still making yeah, episodes. Yeah, they're still coming yeah, out. Yeah, they big. Sh- there are the many big shifts. But to go back to something I mentioned about Scream, where I said they give you the feeling like any character is expendable. The Walking Dead proves that. Like you love this character, ha ha ha. You're gonna love next week. Like <laughs> literally at any point, any time, people can die, and a lot of people don't like that. I mean, characters were dying, and people were creating petitions to bring them back, which is just bullshit. That's just I don't remember that. I'll I'll tell you off air. Okay. But yeah, like people were literally petitioning for people that die to get brought back. But I just think, I think that's bold and I appreciate that choice. And in an apocalyptic world, that's stuff that would happen. So if you haven't checked it out, make sure you do. At least the first like three or four seasons is solid. And there's good moments throughout the rest of the seasons. But I stand strongly, maybe mostly out of nostalgia from the first couple of seasons. You know, you might like Game of Thrones, honestly. I probably would. I just haven't given it a chance yet. Do you what want... is that? Is that HBO? Yeah. I have the DVD. Do you want it? Not now. I don't have time, dude. I have no time for that. No time for <sighs> anyway, that. Anyway, I thought I'd throw in some anime in this just because if, if I didn't do it, no one would. That's 100% true. <laughs> so on Netflix, they have Full Metal Brotherhood. 
Oh. Yeah. We, I remember when you made me watch Full Metal Alchemist. Yeah, that was just Full Metal Alchemist. This is they have Full Metal Alchemist and also Full Metal Full Metal Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Some people like Brotherhood better. Some people like just like the number one. Which one did you make me watch? Brotherhood. The, no, Are I didn't you make sure. That. Yeah. Which one where she could turn into a dog thing? It's both of them. Oh shit! <laughs> Spoilers. And hey, nobody's watching this shit. It's okay. Um, you should watch Full Metal though. It's um. I don't know about you, Tyler. You might not be into it. I liked it when I watched it. Brotherhood's a little different, but I like I like them. Is it different voice actors and everything? Uh, the main dude's the same guy. His brother is a different guy. Different. Wait, they're both brothers. So which one's the main dude? The short one or the metal guy? <laughs> the short one's the main guy, and he's the same. Yes. Okay. Good, That's for, the good for him. Yeah. Okay, I had two, but I didn't I'm, tell I, what it was about. Oh fuck! Nobody cared. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead, dude. Go ahead. <laughs> it's uh, I mean, it's it's a long experience. There's hilarity in suit. <laughs> yeah, they lose their arms in hilarity in suit. Uh, the premise is that there's a science alchemy, which is based off a real thing. It's not like a really science though. It's kind of just like made up science, like a pseudoscience, like Avogadro's number and moles. <laughs> yeah, but um, moles are real. They are, but not to me. Damn hedgehogs. <laughs> Full Metal is about alchemy and how they use alchemy to fix this terrible mistake they did in their life that's good yeah okay so my last one i got one more that i'll do as a a very very quick shout out this is another one that i think probably not as big as the walking dead but it's one that is huge for my childhood it debuted originally on the wb whatever the hell that is and then it made its way to the cw which makes sense in 2000 in stars hollow you know where I'm going? Yes, I do. Gilmore Girls. Yeah, I love Gilmore Girls. Gilmore Girls, man. Like, that was, like, when I was, like, did you ever have a TV show that was always on when you were eating dinner? Uh, Mine was Reba. Reba? Yeah. Okay. So, it it was on ABC Family. Not Apparently, it's not its original network, but it was on ABC Family every af- evening from 5 to 6 p.m., and me and my sister would watch it. Every day between 5 and 6 p.m. I always got the guy from Supernatural mixed up because his name is Sam Yeah. in in Supernatural, but it's yeah. Dean in Gilmore Girls. Yeah. That, that always threw me off, but I didn't watch Supernatural, <laughs> so I got over it. Um, it had Chad Michael Murray for a second, but anyways, like one of my first celebrity crushes was actually Alexis Bledel. I was very young. I would have been eight in 2000, but I don't think I watched it as soon as it came out. But, like, she was one of my first celebrity clush- crushes. I thought Lor- Lorelai was awesome. I thought that name was awesome. Like, uh, Lorelai and Rory, their their dialogue is so fast. Like, it the is way so they fast. talk. It is so quirky. Kirk, quirky. And then uh, Luke's Diner. When me and my sister used to talk about Star Wars or Gilmore Girls, we would either say Luke Skywalker or Food Luke. Like, if we were talking about Gilmore Girls Luke with his plaid shirt and his backwards hat, that was Food Luke. I don't know. And then like their obsession with coffee. I feel like it made me want to try coffee and stuff. It's just, it's, it's one of those things where it's just like, it kind of, there's a lot of cultural stuff in it that you can kind of pull from. It's got the quirky factor. It's a character driven in my opinion. I mean, there, you know, there's stories that I, and I always thought in this like quirky world, you have this very serious dynamic between Lorelai and her mother, Emily, where they just like hated each other, didn't get along. But the grandmother, uh, Emily, got along with Rory really well. I don't know. It was just there's a lot really good drama, really good teen drama without being like too in your face. There was no shock value from what I remember, at least. But I, I just always thought that was a really, really good show. I always love that show. Number 10. Okay. Number 10 is very similar to Sherlock. Um, it's also a British detective. Uh, not a famous name, though. But the actor is pretty famous. David Tennant. Yes. Uh, this show is Broadchurch. Okay. If Doctor you have Who, not right? Yes. And uh, the dude from licking his mouth. <laughs> oh, oh, Barty Potter. Crouch. Yeah. If you've not seen Broadchurch, that's what is it called? Broad Church. Broad Church. It's a city in England where this crime happens, and they bring in this detective who's just been back on the force. It's super good. Okay. He was also. Oh gosh. He's in Fright Night. Yes. The he, remake. He was the villain. In that Netflix TV show with uh, Jessica, Jessica, Jess, Jessica. You just gonna keep saying Jessica. I have no idea. Um, jeez. <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. Jessica Jones. I had to look it up. I'll be very upfront because Charlie could have edited that to make me sound very smart. Like I just thought of it. No, I looked it up. <laughs> Jessica Jones. But continue with your Broadchurch. Yeah. I it. I don't know what to say. Really, it's it's good. It's a hard kind of, t- 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 it's law and order, but England. 
is he English or is he Scottish? He's actually Scottish. Scottish. That's what I thought. Yeah. Um, my shout out, which I'll be very quick on, is it's called Jane the Virgin. Um, it it's like soap opera, but it makes fun of soap operas in itself. Or there's another word for soap opera. Melodrama. No. I'm not looking this one up, okay. but it, it's it's a soap opera. It, it the the premise is a girl that's a virgin gets pregnant. How did it happen? And then hilarity ensues. <laughs> and that, my friends, is our check these out. All right, guys, this is like a look ahead to the next week. We went to we did go to the creative mixer and we saw somebody who's involved in improv. Which kind of got our old improv juices going. So we thought it'd be good to bring back this segment because it is improv. And I want to be very upfront with this. If it sucks, if it's not funny, which Charlie killed it last time. Like absolutely killed it with the Fisher's Cafe and Pub. But it's not going to be concise and edited through editing. Like this is free form improv here. Because we don't know what the other person has. All of that leading up to say we are playing the sponsorship game again. Which is each of us will give the other person a item product service and we're like hey under the pretense that they have now become our sponsor and it's up to that person to create a 30 second spot on this podcast for that product service item that was my chair <laughs> <laughs> so uh I, you we said this i don't know do you want to go first or you want me to go first How's i want to go first you want to go first yeah let me go first all right dude we just got an email came in hot oh yeah not even the spam folder have you heard of glade the air fresheners? Yes. Glade yeah. Plugin has this new scent called Coconut and Beach Woods, and they want us to be a sponsor. Give us a spot. Glade. Coconut and Beach Woods. Yes? Coconut. What's a coconut? It is a round nut ball thing that has some gooey good sides, but it also smells very really good. And woods. What are woods? Trees. There are trees, lots of trees. Many trees. That's why it's called trees. <laughs> Plural trees, coconut ball trees, come on your face. Um, that's what I got. That's that's what Glade wanted from me. That's that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. All right, that was excellent. Uh, Glade. All right, Tyler. Yeah. We just got an email. Perfect. That's what you said to me. That is. Yeah, that, that's probably how they reach us. That's like the only way to reach us. Probably, right? Uh, we got an email and we got an Instagram message oh. uh, from one of those. Uh, have you, you listen to podcasts? <laughs> I do listen to podcasts. They've got commercials podcast. in them. They do. That's so what this, this is. This is like a real, like what a real podcast commercial I think of. Uh, the Real Real. Have you heard of The Real Real? The Real Real. <laughs> the Real Real. What the fuck is that? Uh, it doesn't matter. Do a commercial for them. The Real Real? Yep. Okay. The real, real. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, no, dude. I, yeah, I'm ready. All right. Go ahead. All right. Hey, guys. This is uh, Tyler and Charlie's podcast, and uh, we really appreciate you guys listening. So we want to talk to you about the real, real. I hope you can smell the nice sunny morning and coffee on my, my voice here. You're listening to this in the morning. The real, real. How many of you fishermen out there are trying to catch some nice trout? You know, there's some... <laughs> really nice trout in these woods here you know they smell like coconuts and uh but you're tired of using little spears like you're in the year 1010 well we have what you might call real reels they're like fishing poles because they fucking are real reels <laughs> that was very good, that was I, hope, very good. I hope that picks up <laughs> <laughs> i might have to amplify well, let me, well, <clears throat> that was my npr voice by the way i wasn't just um Muted. All right, Charlie. <laughs> yeah. So you heard of a toothbrush, right? Yeah. And you've heard of the brand Toshiba. Is that a car thing? No, it's computer. Oh, like okay. HP Pavilion okay. Toshiba. Yeah, yeah. So Toshiba has decided to come out with a new toothbrush, and they want us to be the first ones to get it out there. Okay. Are you ready for a brand new tooth cleaning experience? When you put this toothbrush to your mouth, it can read your grooves on your teeth and it goes, zzz, it does that on your teeth, but it also reads how your health is, how your wallet is doing, how your uh, brain is doing. If you have cancer, it's going to pick it up. I'm telling you that right now. It's got uh, sensors in the, the, the fibers and the fibers are, um, they're specially tuned like a car engine. Oh, it's not a car thing. It's especially tuned like a, like a computer 
kind of thing. And it, it reads what you're thinking and also sees if you're going to be fine. Uh, you're probably not going to be fine by the, by the fucking toothbrush. Perfect. <laughs> Tell you ready. I'm ready. Are what ready? what is our final sponsor? Our for final this sponsor evening? for this evening. Yes. Is ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter. Yep. Alright, guys. Uh, how often does this happen to you? You spend a shit ton of money on people to come in, you train them up, and they're fucking shit. <laughs> this happens all the time. How many times do you bring monsters in? They're trash. Are you tired of bringing people in? Indeed you are. That suck. So why don't you come to us with ZipRecruiter? In 24 hours, you're guaranteed to get a human soul in there that can do their job because your job's probably shit anyway. So what you should do is is you should go to ZipRecruiter and get our people and pay us to find people for you because you probably have a really shitty HR team and apparently you don't know how to recruit people your damn self so you reach out and have us do it and then you bitch at us when we can't get you the right people. Well, maybe you should just fucking change how you do your job, you pieces of shit. God damn, you should get an HR. Um, but yeah, so we're going to get you a qualified candidate in 24 hours. ZipRecruiter.com. Bravo. Sponsorship, that y'all. <laughs> this segment is called NPC Ideology. Non-playable character. That's right. Have you, We've done this before. Um, um, Overwatch. Yeah, when the segment one. came out. So that's probably like September, it's man. It's been a while. It's been a minute. So this one is... It's a little early. I'm just going to throw that. I have that for my last note, but... I'm going to throw it right now. This is a little early for what I'm doing because they're a little far in the future. But I'm going to draw a small comparison. I've watched, I read a couple articles. I watched some videos about. You've watched uh, a couple articles? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. It's the. Uh, That's due diligence, y'all. Differences between um, the new Xbox, Xbox 3 S- Series X, and the. Uh, I was going to say 360. <laughs> and the PlayStation 5. Can we already say, can we already, like, if you were giving points to a team, can we already get points to PlayStation 5? Because that just is so much better than Xbox Series X. Just in marketing. X. I know. That's just stupid. What? I don't know what they're doing. Xbox Series X1360. It feels like they're four. trying to sell a car to, like, a 10-year-old. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? It's, it's going to be Xbox 6.23 times 10 to the 23rd power. Like, how is that easy? Avogadro's how, number? I don't know. Okay. How easy is it to say just to say PS5? Yeah, Xbox 5. It's... <laughs> okay, assholes. All right. Xbox, um, we don't know when the next Half-Life's coming out. Five. So, I'm going to run to this... Pretty quickly. If you have a question, stop me. Okay. Both of them promise to be a huge leap in like development, and the horsepower is where it's coming in. <laughs> That'd be funny if they're like, "Well, we're gonna take a couple <laughs> steps back, but you know, <laughs> do you remember the, it's gonna be pretty cool." You remember the blocky things from PS2? <laughs> <laughs> remember when tigers look like squares? <laughs> we're going back to that Tomb Raider shit. All right. So this is the specs, really quick. PS5. I don't know what the fuck any of this means, by the way. <laughs> I'm just gonna throw that. Like, I did my diligence. And I looked up what they're like, what's inside. If you know what that shit means, that's cool. But there's I don't a, know what this a little, means. There's a little fairy just working computers. It's like a nine to five job in there. This dude never stops playing. I so, haven't seen my family in months. A PS5 has eight core, sixteen thread, AMD Zen two. <laughs> what the fuck? It feels like I'm speaking in code. I don't know what that means. It's the processor. I don't know. It's the processor. And the Xbox is actually very similar. It's also a Zen 2. Do they come with memory cards? No. (laughs) They come with something called a solid state drive. SSD. Comes with gap insurance. It's actually supposed to be really good, SSD. Um, I don't know what it means, but it's supposed to be able to load faster. Like, I have literally no idea. When was the last time you were playing a game? You're like, man, I wish this was load faster. That tree didn't... Actually, I was playing Fallout. I was like, I'm kind of bored of this loading screen. Really? So, yeah. Does Fallout change when you go to different locations? Yeah, if you go inside and outside, it has to reload the ro- world the whole time. So, yeah, I kind of get where that's coming from. Trash. <laughs> um, just because you play, like, side-scrollers. Well, you know... <sighs> um... Apparently, the Xbox Series X is supposed to be four times more powerful than the Xbox One. That's something that's been thrown around. Wait, say it again. The Xbox Series X is supposed to be four times more powerful than the Xbox One. Oh. Um, and they're both going to be 4K 60 frames per second compatible. Okay. And 8K support. So I don't. Eight thousand. I, I don't think they even invented eight K yet. So I don't know. What the <laughs> they're fuck just throwing they're doing. that shit on there. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> How can we make this more addicting? Um, they both will have ultra Blu-ray players too. 
Okay. So like the 4K Blu-rays. Two games have been released. One for the PlayStation, one for the Xbox. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> See? Like, you're already <laughs> saying blah, blah, blah. I know. It's too long. I said that. Too long. But one is with Hellblade 2, and that is for the Xbox. Oh, that sounds terrible. It looks fucking scary. Have you seen the trailer for it? No. I'm going to post it, probably. It's scary. Okay. And then the PlayStation 5 is called Godfell. I watched them both, and honestly, I was more impressed with the Xbox trailer. Okay. I don't know what about it was. It was scary as shit. But I think there was, like, a depth of character and, like, feel I was impressed with. Okay. It could just be the games that they premiered with. You should post a video on our WordPress blog. I'm going to, yeah. <laughs> so if you guys want to check out our WordPress blog, we post stuff every Saturday and Monday. Yes. We write plug. articles. We write articles about ourselves and, like, what we are into. Just a little plug it in, plug Some it background in. background stuff. Sorry, I didn't mean to. No, that's cool. Go back to the Xbox, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the PlayStation 5 is starting with a couple of advantages. First advantage is that they will have predictably better exclusives because they typically do, like um, Last of Us. Metal Gear. Well, no, Metal- actually, I think the last Metal Gear is on Xbox. Metal Gear. Uh, <laughs> fuck you. Um, last of Us, uh, Uncharted. Yeah. Like, usually they have better exclusives they are already in the lead so that this it's easier to keep that lead if they're already in the lead in terms of sales yes okay i will say that i have a ps4 and i do not have an xbox one so i i do not either both will be backwards compatible good wait so you can play uh so we'll say a playstation so you can play a playstation 4 game or you can play playstation 1 2 3 and 4 ps5 should be backwards compatible for all all of its generations. Okay. Xbox is a... Uh, what I mean by they're backwards compatible is they want to have like this whole like Nexus system where like they have this like system where you can stream. That's the easiest way I can explain it. But, but will, the, will the disc work? Like if you have an Xbox disc... <sighs> no, the disc won't work. Trash. But you should be able to stream it. I don't like that system. PS4, or sorry, PS5 is kind of trying to deal with PS4 days that have really good exclusives, but better graphics. Yeah. And, yeah. like, kind of keep that same model, but also backwards compatible, which is really good. Yeah. I like the PS5 system set up so far. The price, I don't fucking know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no yeah, one Have knows. they even listed that yet? No, not really. Do you have a guess? I have a guess. No, I think it's, like, 500. I would guess I was 500 s- for yes, PlayStation 5. That's exactly what I was going to say. But the idea is that PlayStation 5 is going to be more expensive than the xbox just because it's like classier yeah maybe um, the xbox will be 450 or we'll s- yeah i don't know what's gonna happen with price dude i remember when the ps3 was like 600 or 650 or yeah. whatever that was crazy but it's like i said in the beginning it's too early to tell for all this that's just some specs and like how they're pitching the stuff all right guys this is week two of our first week food burger edition where we are trying to find the best burger in Ohio. Our quest. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to continue. <laughs> nope. Our quest to find the best burger in Ohio and then hilarity will ensue. <laughs> so, do you think the giant eels are going to help us? But the big birds? No. <laughs> what are you talking Oh, I see what you yeah, mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, not not you, the actual giant eels. I, I know what you mean. You're talking Lord of the Rings right? I am. Uh, no. So, we decided to try Cleveland's own Nano Brew. Dude. It, it's a West, Mar- West Side Market area. Yeah, yeah, it's on the West Side. Ohio City, is that correct? Ohio City. Ohio City, that's right. That's yeah. actually very good. They got a parking lot in the back, which you do gotta pay for, but it's not super expensive. It's $2, man. Well, I, I think it's by time. Well, for us, it's $2. Yeah, it's, it's a nice little parking lot, though. So... Last month, we were like, we're going to pick Swenson's first because Akron's known for Swenson's. LeBron took his cast of train wreck to Swenson's, and pretty much people in Akron are like, this is the best burger place. So why did we choose Nano Brew? So this is the process we took. I found many, 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 many articles, and Charlie and I looked at all the lists of the restaurants, and then through cross-checking, we found out which ones were listed multiple times, and then we had to cross-check that with their menu to see if they had a veggie burger. <laughs> it was a process. But so Nano Brew had two burgers, one that was named one of the 33 best burgers in America by Thrillist, and they had one that was voted the most unique in Cleveland's magazine Burger Kings. So there were two options here. 
and us being the little uh, chub musters that we are. We, burger boys. The burger boys, the Segway boys that we are. We decided that I would get one of them and we would split the other one. And then Charlie would get one that looked yummy to him. Yeah. So without further ado, let us dive into this first week food burger edition of Nano Brew. Presentation. This is the story present- of a girl. <laughs> this is the presentation. Let's let's do this first though, because we always mess it up. Let's explain yeah. what we got. Let's let's say. Oh, okay. Let's okay, say okay. what we got. <laughs> Charlie got what is called the fun guy. Fun guy, yeah, because it's fungus. Yeah, <laughs> blue cheese, mushroom. What the fuck is duxels? Dux duxels? I don't know what that is. I, I, it's not that I can't read y'all. It's, I just don't know what this word. Looks mushrooms. Frenchy. There was mushrooms on it. It's, it's, Blue it's cheese, mushrooms. mushroom, steak sauce. Did you eat the steak sauce? I like steak sauce. Really? Is that the only sauce in the world you like? It's just like barbecue and ketchup? sauce. Okay. You like barbecue sauce? I do. I'm learning about you every day. <laughs> An onion ring and lettuce. Lettuce pieced out. Yeah, I the lettuce that. dipped out. Lettuce really. is like too healthy for this shit. Yeah, know, right? fell. And that's the burger that wasn't listed, but it caught your eye. Yes. So the burger I ate, that was, you ate that exclusively yeah, with, with I was big like, old juicy meat on I was, it. It was walking by. I was like, hello. <laughs> hey, girl. And the one I got m- on my own was the one that was voted the most unique by Burger Kings. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Not the Burger King. Can I, he was, Tyler was like, uh, what What about this don't you like? What What doesn't appeal <laughs> to you? Yeah. I asked him. So because when I showed him this, I was like, let's get this. We should. And he's like, I'm not doing that. And when I saw this, I was like, oh, this is actually one because you can substitute patties. Because I kind of felt like I was going to be a liability in this competition where Charlie was going to be the one trying all the special burgers and I'd be just trying their bland old ass veggie burgers. But I was impressed because this is the one that I could try. So I asked Charlie, what of this do you not like? <laughs> This burger is called the Acid Trip. It comes with American cheese, cabbage vinegar slaw, balsamic reduction, pickled red onion, and spicy mayo. Yeah, I, I almost covered my fiance. My wife is like, the only thing on that he'll eat is the American cheese. That's a fact. So I ended up getting that. And so this, and this is before we got there. We planned this out ahead of time. I was preparing myself. And with everything they, they have, they say you can have a beef patty, a chicken breast, fried chicken breast, or... A falafel burger, which I'll be honest, I was like, man, that might really take away from it. But you know what? I can eat it. I can do falafel. We'll go into it. And and then so we decided, but what we wanted to try was called the spicy, which if you guys remember the jalapeno incident, <laughs> neither of us are really that good with yeah. spicy. <laughs> he was like, do you want to try the spicy? I was like, do you remember I threw up? <laughs> so, th- so what we did is we split this one, which was a uh, falafel. We decided to split the spicy, which was voted one of the 33 best burgers in America by Thrillist, American cheese, roasted poblano peppers, caramelized onion, spicy mayo, which we did not get, and lettuce. So that now you guys know what we got. And we got Ivy Tater Tachi had waffle fries. Like, I actually, uh, I get a side. Well, you ate some. Though. I get it. They're fine. We were, uh, yeah, we were large and in charge during this meal. <laughs> so yeah, presentation. I just want to give you guys that visual there. So to start. It's presented very well. Yes. What is what is the score? Is it one to two or one to three? Three presentation. If you so, I'll run through this again. So much prefacing. So know, right? we're still doing presentation, portion size, attentiveness, cost, deliciousness. We're still unpacking this with the pack scale. So it's still PPACD, except instead of all of them being worth five, so a total of fifty for yeah. both of us. Right. It's pre- presentation is out of three. Portion size, still five. Attentiveness is only at a two. We're only looking at the burgers here. Cost is at a five. And instead, deliciousness is out of ten. So, first my presentation. I thought it looked... It was good. I, I didn't like the plates they were on. The, like, they were, like, on thin metal tins. Yeah, I don't like those. Applebee's does that shit, too. Yeah, you got, like, a long... It, it, it felt very, like, um... What's the word? It starts with a tea tavernish. Like, yeah. you got a tavern. It's yeah. like, you're not eating on a plate... There's like that foil or Some not newspaper. foil paper, like paper <laughs> newspaper it's from like the garbage. Uh, there's like that thin checkered paper and then on the, the, the tin thing and then there's your burger. Yeah, I don't like the tin thing, but I like the burger. It looked all right. It looked pretty good. It was definitely presentable. They had it where yeah. like for me, the top was off so you could mm-hmm. kind of see everything on top. Mine was kind of too. Like, oh my. The, like, um, the, like, the blue cheese and the steak sauce kind of like combined. It was right. kind of like an art project. I, I thought it, it looked good. It was, it was first of all. Right now, all we have to compare it to is Swenson's, yeah, which was delicious, but man, it looked it was sloppy. garbage. It was sloppy. Where this was like it was like as they say in the food world, it was plated. It so, was so to was. speak. 
um i mean where the you know the toppings looked good it wasn't smushed the bun top was lifted off so it looked good um what did what did you give it Ugh. are we boring you Charlie? no i'm sorry i didn't have any coffee I give it a two. I give it a two as well. So we have a score of four. That's solid. Portion size. Okay. I now keep this in context. We each got a burger and then we each split a burger. So we didn't get necessarily an appetizer this time or anything. So in I that count half a burger as an appetizer. Yeah, I, I just mean in general, like normally when we're talking about portion size, like last year we were talking about it in terms of still considering an appetizer, yeah. where this time we just had a burger and a half. <laughs> it was bigger than Swenson's burger. It wasn't like one of those steakhouse burgers where it's like you have to unhinge your jaw to eat it. Honestly, it probably was like the per- for me, I think it was the perfect size burger. Like, I mean, could it have been a little bit bigger? Sure. Obviously, I, w- I probably wouldn't want it smaller. You want your money's worth and everything. I was definitely full afterwards, which I should be because I had a burger and a half. But I, it, I don't think it's something that somebody would leave complaining about. I think that ties into cost. I feel like if you pay like, like for instance, Swenson, we paid like three or four dollars for those burgers. So even though they were a little bit smaller, you kind of were like, eh, you know, I paid only a couple bucks for it. So it's kind of I feel like portion size in expectations is tied into cost a little bit. So without having gone into cost yet, I'll say going to Nana Brew, getting one of their special burgers, I thought it was a really good portion size. Like a comfortable, I'm not going to feel gross after this. I can eat it and be happy and enjoy it. I thought the portion size was average. Does that make sense? Um, like not too big, not too small. Like, yeah, like well, bear, big it's, bear. it's a little small for me, but I, that's just because of my preference for burgers. Like I like a burger that's like a half a pound. These I think were like a third of a pound. Maybe even like a fourth of a pound. Oh, I don't think it was a fourth. I think like a McDouble. It was like a third. I think a McDouble is a fourth of a pound. It was like a third then. How Okay. How was the beef, by the way? Well, that's that's deliciousness. Never mind. um, Forget I asked. Okay. Uh, But I I, like I said, I like about a third of a pound. It was about a third of a pound. I like about a half pound. So it it was like a proportionate kind of size to a cheeseburger. I like them a little bigger personally. Where 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 do you go to get a big burger? Like a half pound burger? Yeah. Waking Lizard has a half pound burger. It's really okay. good. Okay. Good plug. Good plug. Not a <laughs> not a sponsor. <laughs> uh, I think Melt has a half pound burger too, but I've never gotten it there. So what? So what did you give their portion size? I gave it a three. Like I said, it's average to me. So I, yeah. Okay, I gave it a four. So that is seven, which currently puts us yeah. at eleven. Attentiveness. So it's kind of awkward because our waiter came in after us. Yeah. So when we when we were walking. <laughs> in there is somebody it's like when you can feel that person just like right on your heels <laughs> it felt like there was like a, a fourth person to our group yeah i i really thought like how many i was like are they just gonna assume four and she just rushed past us so then our server comes smelling cigarette smoke and i was like hey guys you realize like that was the girl that was right behind us and i was like what no i didn't i initially didn't notice and she spoke like you guys won't hear anything so this isn't going to be effective but i'm going to tell you how she spoke hey guys do that was a different anything? girl okay but there was that somebody. was like a hostess uh, okay yeah, they both had. They both looked the same. Uh, the one girl was covered in tattoos. Did they both have hair? Well, yeah. Were they both female? Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> That's a little <laughs> sexist. Uh, no, I th- I th- I liked her hostess. I didn't have the hostess. She was super. Quiet. I, I like the hostess too. She yeah. didn't smell like cigarettes. I I don't know. I like the waitress. I, I had the... no problem with either one of them. Honestly, they gave, they got us our food. They got us our drinks. Yeah. They didn't impair our visit. No, but they weren't like pushy, with like specials, but. I also didn't know if there were any specials. My audio, my auditory senses were messed up by her really quiet voice of the one girl, and then my olfactory senses were messed up by the cigarettes of the other girl. I like that smell, but I didn't mind. So I keep this. This is about the burgers, it's not about them. But you know, if for whatever reason the service is terrible, this is where you get knocked. I, I gave him a two out of two. It was fine. I gave him a two too. All right, two as well. A two, two as well, which is a score of four and puts us at fifteen. Cost. Okay, so Nano Brew is, as the French say, a la carte. You you order your sandwich or your your burger or whatever, and then you order your your side separately. The good news is is that neither one are overpriced. They 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 ain't got those beautiful those those good good lock view prices where you pay seven or eight dollars <laughs> in Swenson you, prices or Swenson's prices. That's true, but I would also argue that the quality is you know. 
Well, maybe not more than Lockview, but Swenson's absolutely. This wasn't, in my opinion, this was this was like tavern burgers. This wasn't fast food. It wasn't wrapped up and you had to open it up and the cheese is stuck. It wasn't like that. So I would say that the average burger cost was somewhere between seven and nine dollars, and the average side cost was between three and four dollars. There were appetizers, like I saw they had mac and cheese bites and stuff like that, which were, you know, like five to probably seven or eight dollars. But if you were to get a burger and you were to get a side like tater tots waffle fries or whatever and a drink water pop or whatever you'd probably would expect to spend anywhere between 12 and 15 dollars is that fair yes i mean in this in in with these inflated prices in this economy <laughs> i think that's fine i mean it's not swenson's but we went to a tavern like we went to a bar and grill bar thing we didn't we didn't go to wendy's although i've spent ten dollars at wendy's I think uh, in terms of the quality of the food, in terms of the atmosphere, and what you could be paying at places for burgers and fries or whatever, I thought that the price was actually pretty good. I agree with you. I actually agree 100%. Nothing seemed super overpriced for what it was. Yeah, like I said, I like a bigger burger, but you know what? For what it costs, I think what they gave us was really good. And also, I think they're a little bit lower in price because I think we had this experience before. They want you to buy drinks. Yeah, that that's a hundred percent like Lockview or Barrio, which I know yeah. we haven't actually been to for the podcast, but we both really love Barrio in you know Northeast Ohio, and that's like you can get a taco for three dollars, and like well how do they you how do they you know stay functioning? Well, drinks, drinks, Brady, drinks. Yeah, drinks. It's all about those drinks, about those drinks. No tacos. <laughs> um, so I'll, th- let me be as candid as possible. I got a burger, I got tater tots. We split a burger price wise. I got water. And I got a glass of wine, Cabernet, and my bill was $24. For a drink, a side, because I'm fatty, and then a half a burger and a burger, and I ate all of it, damn it. I, I swear to you, I ate every single bite. Uh, it was about $24. It's not bad. No, if you take the drink off, you take either the half of the burger or the side off, you know, it's like 15 16 We only paid a couple more dollars for two people. Way to make me feel shit. It's that wine, dude. The wine <laughs> was the wine bucks. jacket. No, oh, it's almost like what you said, the drinks. The drinks. It was good wine, though. It was good Cabernet. I give it a four out of five. I gave it a four out of five too. Get Look out of my at- face! <laughs> Look at that. We- you know what? This head. is consistency. We're just making up for that uncut gems review where we were so polar opposite. <laughs> know, and right? We're like, what do you think? I think the same thing that you think. What a clip that is! The same thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that is a score of eight, which gives us a math score. And I'm doing math in my head of twenty three, going into deliciousness. Deliciousness. So my first burger, I'll just count as my my fungi burger. Yeah, I, I I noted this at the restaurant. It had this like earthy, like a really earthy kind of flavor and texture. It was good. I think the fried onion rings helped with that a lot. The bun was perfect for it. I thought the bun was great. Uh, the lettuce, I think, was unnecessary. They also <laughs> well, dipped out. out. Yeah, it was like, like, I was, like I was, it was gone. Uh, I wish there was a little more blue cheese. I think that could have helped a little more. I don't think it really needed help. I think it would have been nicer to have a little blue cheese. The uh, mushrooms had this just earthy kind of quality. I really liked it. It was good. It went really well with the beef. I thought it was good. So I like that burger. Can I, can I score this? No, we'll we'll do the scoring at the end. Okay. And the second burger. Well, I'll, I'll, let me do my one that I did separately, and then Sounds we'll good. double good. double team the spicy. Cool. So the one that I had on my own was the acid trip. So a reminder, that was the American cheese, cabbage, vinegar, salad, balsamic reduction, pickled red onion, spicy mayo. So I'm going into this thinking, okay, like, I don't know. I, I felt bad because I only had falafel on one occasion. That was at Mr. Zubbs in Akron, and it was okay. It was okay. Um, I didn't love it, but it was fine. I was more than anything just impressed that they had an option besides just a burger patty. So I'm going in there thinking, okay, I'm going to get my burger falafel. And Charlie was nice enough to agree to get our split one falafel as long as we took off the mayo, which I was fine with because this one had mayo on it. So I could kind of judge it from there. So I get there and I look down and it's like for $3 extra. That's another reason why mine was a little bit pricier. Yeah. You can get a Beyond Burger patty. And I was so freaking excited because that is my favorite vegetarian substitution so i was thrilled so we decided that we were going to keep the falafel for the one we're splitting the one that was voted the best blah 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 whatever and instead of getting falafel for my burger i decided to get the beyond burger it was really it was a really really good burger it it, and but it's voted most unique and i already named all the stuff like the pickled onion whatever the balsamic reduction it it 
it was more bland than I was expecting, though. Like, when they kind of built it up, it's quirky, it's unique, it's an acid trip, brah. Like, I was expecting it to kind of, like, you know, kind of like you're in the octagon. I was expecting some punches of flavor that I wasn't expecting. It it just felt like a solid burger. Like, it was just, a, it was a good burger. It, let, okay, let, let me put it this way. And I like the flavor of the Beyond Burger. I think the Beyond Burger is great. It's my favorite. None of those flavors battled the Beyond Burger flavor. So, I would imagine it would be the same with a beef patty. So you have all these different ingredients, and none of them overpowered the the patty, which I, I guess isn't a bad thing, because that's what I think olives do, and I think banana peppers do that. They overpower what you're eating, and sometimes that can be annoying. But I, I was ex- I was expecting more of a punch. Like, I was expecting a little bit more of a punch with some of these flavors, but I can't complain, because it was a really good burger. And I'll leave it at that for now. Do you, you want to move on to the... Yes. Yeah, so now, so those were Spicy. our those were our separate ones. So now we're gonna talk about the one that we split fifty yeah. fifty down the middle, which they did cut for us. They did. Yeah, Bless their nice hearts. I was joking, but I appreciate that she did. <laughs> so this is the one that was considered one of the top thirty three burgers in America by oh, Thrillist. That was the good spicy. attentiveness. Yeah. Yes. Okay. It was really freaking good. It was super good. That falafel, man. I didn't expect it to like it that much. I've had falafel before. I enjoy falafel as a not vegetarian. I enjoy falafel a lot. But you had the Zubs one as well. Yeah, but I've also I've made it myself too. But I'm saying that your experience with the Zubs wasn't any better than my experience with Zubs. No. And no. that was my only that's okay. my only experience. So you understand where I'm coming from. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. It was like crispy ish. It had this nice green color, which is weird. It's weird. <laughs> that's the patty. Patty, if you can use that in quotes. It wasn't off putting green though. It was like a no. Deep green. I just got and I'm colorblind. Who knows what I saw? But I looked at it and I was like, I like when I you know, it was like cut in half. It was beautiful. I was looking at it, I'm like, man. So let me let me just refresh your memory. This had American cheese, roasted poblano peppers, and caramelized onions and lettuce. Yeah. And with that and the falafel, man, like I, I we were leaving the restaurant and I was like, I was not expecting to be raving about the falafel no it was so like it was soft and crunchy in such a good different kind of way i hadn't had i told tyler i was like you know if i was a vegetarian i would enjoy this as much as meat you did say that i i I, physically mentally spiritually i was thinking dang it i wish i would have got the beyond burger on both and then i ate them and i was like I wish I would have got the falafel on my other burger. And and I'm coming into this biased because the Beyond Burger, and I said this when we went to Swenson's when I ate their veggie burger. I said, I feel bad for any of these veggie burgers that have to fight the Beyond Burger. You did say that. I literally Only said. Only a month later, anything, we got a new contender. Literally, like this, I mean, you should be able to tell by the way we're saying it, but the falafel, the spicy burger, the one that got voted... Which it wasn't that spicy. No, it's called the spicy burger, and I liked it. Yeah, it wasn't that spicy. Poblano peppers aren't that spicy, and we didn't have the mayo on it because Charlie doesn't like mayo. But mm-hmm. I, hey, I had that exact mayo on my other burger. It wasn't that spicy, not at all. But it was a really, really, really good burger. And if 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 the if the spicy, which is what it's called, is competing against the ones we ate today, and it's competing against Swenson's. Like, if it's its own category, easily I think that's the best burger we've had. I think so, too. And it was falafel. Yeah. Who Imagine in a, a year, no. next December, if we're crowning the best burger and it wasn't <laughs> even beef. Obviously, none of mine are going to be beef. But yeah. I'm going to be a little shocked if the best burger we have all year is falafel. I would be, too, especially for me. I think – I can I just uh, uh, pitch this right now? Yes. I think whoever we decide to crown the winner – we should go back to that place. I agree. Yeah. yeah. And host something and let them know. They won't give a shit, <laughs> but we'll know <laughs> yeah. that we are there for that reason. So I, I think this is going to be not surprising. I'm going to rank mine. Are you cool with that? Yes. I give the falafel, the spicy, the thrillist 33 best burger in America. I give that a five out of five because remember, this is out of 10, but we're doing them right. separately. And very close behind. I think it's a testament to it. But the fact that I'm comparing it side by side, what I think is the best burger I've had, you know, on the, so far, I give the acid trip a four. It because I can't punish it that it didn't punch me in the mouth of flavors because I probably wouldn't have liked that. That was just what I was expecting. But compared to the falafel, it was a little bland. Like it, de- like I can't give it a five because, in my opinion, eating them literally side by side, bite of one, bite of the other, shoving it in my face, the spicy with the falafel is better. So I give it a five and a four. A score of 9 out of 10. Can I do my score now? Absolutely. All right. 
So the fun guy versus the spicy. I'm going to score the fun guy first. Fun guy. I gave it a four. It was just missing a little something. Especially compared to the falafel burger. I'm not a vegetarian. Isn't that kind of mind blowing? Yes. Compared to the falafel burger. I gave it a five. You gave the falafel burger five. I gave it a falafel a five. (laughs) Wow. I'm shooketh. I might really not really, but like you know what I mean. Like I'm shocked. I'm really shocked, dude. Okay, are we? Uh, let me let me put it this way because I feel bad because we keep saying the falafel burger. How good do you think that burger would be? You think it would be just as good with beef? No. So okay, so the stipulation is the fact that it was falafel. Yeah. What about those peppers? Those peppers were pretty good, man. They had a little kick. They were and fine. The, and I love caramelized onions. Like I would pay extra at places for caramelized onions. So, it was good. I, we've been calling it the falafel this whole time, but I do want to give a shout out to the fact that it had the poblano peppers, which were great, and the caramelized onions, and the cheese was good too. Yeah. So the whole thing. It's not just the. It's not just the falafel. The whole thing was freaking good. It was very good. So. That gives us a score of Michael Jordan, rip Kobe. Yeah, <laughs> just got to shout that. Yeah, I feel yeah. like it's sad because now when I think of that, like, because those are always in my head, Michael Jordan, Kobe, and LeBron. Yeah. You know, Kobe, LeBron, Michael Jordan, they're always right there. So, you know, it's going to give me think about that for a little bit. But anyways, this, so Nano Brew and their spicy, their fungi, and their acid burger are 41 out of 50 for... Uh, Michael Jordan. I think that's fair. I think it's fair too. I I I'm actually surprised it's not higher, but yeah, it is what it is. I just can't believe that we left that place raving about falafel. I can't either. That's an, and we, you know, surprising. again, there's no like, there's no incentive for us to do this if we didn't like it. Like, it really was that good. We're not yeah. trying to be cool. We're not trying <laughs> to be unique. No, you know, it's just it was just better. It was I want to come here and be like, meat's best. Tyler's stupid. <laughs> I literally compared it against my favorite veggie burger in the world, and you compared it against real beef. Yes, and it was better. So, however they cook falafel there, shout out to them, man. Yeah, shout out to they them. They got something. Okay, guys, so that was our our first week food, burger edition, our second entry of the year. Um, we haven't, being as transparent as possible, we haven't picked out our next spot. So no, if you guys, no. if there's a burger place in Ohio that you guys know we need to try, you know, hit us up either on Instagram, on Facebook, at the Segway Podcast, gmail.com. Let us know. Uh, next week on Second Week Cinema. We're going to see not Hansel and Gretel. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. That would roll off the tongue way too fast. Next week on Second Week Cinema, we're going to see Gretel and Hansel. Gretel and Hansel. God, that and I got no, pro- I got no problem it. with that. But, man. It's is just, it straight horror or is it thriller? It's got the little It's the little girl. That, <laughs> it's got the little girl. It has the girl from It in it. The oh, one. My. Uh, the, the younger, the younger girl. Yeah, I got you. Not the older. I'm excited to see it. I don't know. I think it'll be good, you know, I'm sure. Or or it won't. I don't Maybe know. it's going to be garbage. I don't know. Listen, there's not that many good movies out right now. And Charlie Charlie already saw 1917. I did. Um, You should see that, though, by yourself. It's yeah, really good. We'll see. It's really good. Um, But yeah, so we're going to see Gretel and Hansel next. Charlie's leaving on his vacation soon. Yeah, I'm going to be gone for two weeks. Yep, so we're recording this ahead of time. We're recording that one ahead of time. And then when you get back, we'll go back to probably being more topical and timely. I think we will. Um, But our interviews even recorded. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. We're, we got a really good interview coming up, It's going to be super good. It's going to be awesome. We're very, very excited about that. But anyways, remember, if you guys are enjoying the content, please, please, please subscribe. You know, hit that five star. Actually, please leave a review. Review and five stars on Apple. I think I was listening to a podcast and they, they could not stop stressing it. Oh, okay. so please do that. Yeah, we got, I think on Apple, I only check Apple. I don't check Spotify or Stitcher being honest. But on Apple, I think we have nine reviews. So we we appreciate those. We read them. We see them. We appreciate it. And uh, really want to shout out Ray Winery and Everyday Akron. Oh, yeah. They thank give you us, so much. They give us so much love. And it's like I feel unworthy of it. Like I, I try and push it their way. And I want to shout out them. I, we At that the thing that we're going to be talking about next week, I, I told them about Everyday Akron. I hope they take over the Instagram for a week. Mm-hmm. But I just want to say we really appreciate the support. It means a lot to us. Yeah. We, I, I don't know how to say thank you enough. And... As always, this is the segue. Best thing to happen to you on a Thursday. But all you other bitches out there that aren't being supportive, <laughs> hit that goddamn subscribe button. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Please.